It's Thursday, June 25th, 2020, and you're watching Up to the Minute. Good morning, everyone. I'm Brittany Pacheco, still filling in for Todd Duplantis, but I am once again joined by the man, the legend, Frank Cooper. Good morning, Frank. How are you uh, this very rainy morning in Houston? I'm good, man. The training wheels are off. Day three for me in a row. I feel so accomplished, man. So, uh, hey, hey, guys, ladies and gents, follow us on, on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, all social media flat, uh, platforms, and, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Grow the show for you, please. Thanks, Frank. We're going to come talk to you in just a moment. And we are being, uh, we're going to have a very special show today because not only do we have one of our HCC colleagues joining us just as we speak. We're so excited she's here. Um, but we also have a very special guest from across the country in Virginia. So first, I'd like to say good morning to uh, Jennifer Vaca, who is uh, <laughs> who is our interim program director for the HCC Adjunct Academy. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. And heading over to Virginia in who is part of the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation, is Assistant Director of Outreach Education and Digital Media Services, Heather Hauer. Good morning, Heather. How are you? Good morning. Doing well. Awesome. Well, we'll come talk to you in just a moment, Heather, but we're going to start with Jennifer first um, with our little discussion about the Adjunct Academy. So, Jenny, uh, for starters, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the Adjunct Academy is? Oh, of course. Uh, the Adjunct Academy is something that has been developed at Houston Community College. It was founded in 2008. It is a professional development workshop series exclusively tailored to adjuncts. We host eight workshops throughout the year. They're about four hours each. And we really focus on three different pillars. Um, one, of course, is the pedagogical advancement. So really looking at student-centered teaching methods and activities. But we also look at institutional knowledge, increasing that for our adjuncts, especially if somebody's brand new to HCC. And then lastly, um, developing community. It's kind of nice to get to meet your fellow peers and then work with additional faculty. That's fantastic. Uh, Jenny, how many uh, participants have been there or how many um, has has HCC graduated in, in this program? Um, so for a time, 2008 and up till 2015, we were mainly located at the Northwest HCC colleges so that, that at that time, that would be Spring Branch campus, Katy campus, and then uh, Ailey Hayes at, at a different time. Um, and at that juncture, we were running about one cohort a year. So we had graduated 90, but then thanks to transformation, the Adjunct Academy went district wide. And since then, we are now up to 363 graduates from the Adjunct Academy. And wow. That's including our most recent class. That is fantastic. Uh, I'm going to turn a question time over to my my co-host Frank. Frank, uh, what do you what do you want to know more about the Adjunct Academy? So, um, Ms. Ms. Vaca, what are the uh, what are like the uh, prerequisites to get into the academy? Well, this is good news, right? As long as you are an HCC employee. Um, you are welcome. Um, again, we do tailor to the adjunct, um, but we have even had some different staff that, you know, maybe they're in um, advising, we've had, and maybe even campus operations or library services, and they're interested in teaching, so they may enroll. But the primary criteria is that they are at HCC. And so uh, because you all do so many workshops, um, both in the uh, fall and the spring, can you kind of walk us through what a workshop is like within the Adjunct Academy? Sure. So we have a very strong philosophy that if you are a teacher, you should be the one that is not doing all of the heavy lifting. Um, if you're leaving your classes feeling exhausted, then we would ask you to rethink what is happening in those classes, meaning that it's the students who should be doing the work, not you, right? So we practice mirrored pedagogy. Our facilitators come in and they are trying to mirror exactly what it is that we are teaching. So we might start off a workshop with a very nice social breakfast. 
And then we would go into um, some kind of a warm up exercise, an icebreaker, and then typically a reflective exercise, which is very important because as teachers and instructors, you get caught up in the day to day. And this is that time to really quiet yourself and look at what is working, what needs to be further improved. And from there, we would go into some more interactive exercises and then ultimately end with some kind of demonstration where whatever the topic is that we're covering, now there's this opportunity to kind of show it back. And so examples of that type of content or topic would be, it could be assessment methods, like looking at the difference between our summative and formative um, assignments, if those are aligning, it could be how to integrate more student centered activities into the classroom. You know, a lot of what you just discussed sounds very similar to uh, what my husband does. He is an elementary teacher who's now actually switching grades from the first grade to third grade. And so a lot of his team uh, team group meetings sound very similar to what you all do in the adjunct academy, assessing what works and what doesn't work. Um, all that, all the good stuff um, that I'm sure if he was sitting here listening with me, he'd, he'd have a comment or two to say, yes, I, you know, I agree with that. And that's exactly what we do. So that is exciting to hear that this is happening all throughout all grade levels of education. So Absolutely. what is going on with uh, the academy as of now? I mean, what, what kind of exciting things are you all uh, in the, in the middle of? Okay, so we have about three things that are actually happening now, even though we're not in the middle of our normal workshop cycle. Uh, number one is that we have tried to create some alumni programming. So since we've got 360, what did I say, three graduates, we wanna make sure that we are continuing that progress that it's not like you just take the academy and then that's it. Um, so for instance, right now, uh, as we speak, we are hosting our first digital storytelling workshop with some alumni. It's a small pilot. It's been a steep learning curve, but it's been a lot of fun, very exciting. So they're getting to learn about that and then hopefully integrate that into their classrooms for their students. Um, number two, we are currently accepting applications for the 2020-20 one adjunct academy cycle so if anybody is interested in the adjunct academy you can go onto our website right now and you can apply for this coming year and then lastly because you know it was a slight delay this year um, i'm sure everybody doesn't know what i'm talking about right um, we are going to just now be hosting our graduation for our 2019-2020 Adjunct Academy graduates on July 2nd. And it is going to be a bit of an experiment. We have, uh, on July 2nd, we will have a pre-recorded component similar to our spring commencement, but then we're also going to have a live component where all of our graduates can come together and share their different experiences. That is amazing. How awesome, because obviously, you know that we just had our very first virtual graduation ceremony for all of our students. And so that's exciting that that's actually going to happen also for our adjunct academy graduates as well. Yes. And when is that taking place? So that is going to be Thursday, July 2nd. We are going to have a very fancy premiere um, and it'll be at 6 p.m. And if anybody is interested, you can always email me, jennifer.vaca at hccs.edu, and I'll be happy to share that information with you. In addition to our graduates that are invited, and they are welcome to bring a guest. Um, we will also be inviting their respective chairs and deans, letting them know that they have their adjuncts that have completed the program, and they are encouraged to come and celebrate with us. That is awesome. Frank, you have a question for Jenny? Yes, Ms. Jenny, so um, with the whole COVID-19 situation going on, how has that affected the, uh, the upcoming fall semester? Oh, okay, well, you know, not at all. <laughs> um, you know, I think like pretty much everybody in the world right now, we are, you know, closely following what is happening, but we are also preparing. So right now, myself and my facilitator team, we are looking at those different workshops and how to create what we currently have in an online environment. And again, you know, since we practice mirrored pedagogy, we have to be very conscious and thinking about how everything we're doing should mirror what we would want them to do with their students. Um, 
you know, and I'm sure from our IED department and, you know, anybody who is taking this online training, it is a lot to consider, like how to make this a very engaging and student centered environment. And we are working on it. It is going to happen. <laughs> Um, we are not quite there just yet, but again, it is in progress and we are looking forward to working with our new applicants. And one of the key things that we have talked about doing is having smaller cohorts online to create more of a mentorship bond between our facilitators and the individual participants and even participant to participant. Um, we find over and over again that one of the greatest strengths in the Adjunct Academy is how people learn from each other. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with that. I mean, uh, as a former HTC student myself, I, I really relied on my instructors to show me the way because I was a first generation student. And so a lot of it, I also um, want to just give credit to the Adjunct Academy for all that they do and um, helping our students. And I, I once again agree, we learn from each other. And I think that's one of the best resources we have out there for all of our students. Jenny, um, if anyone is interested in applying uh, for the Adjunct Academy, what is the website that they can go to? Well, really simple. Just go to hccs.edu backslash adjunct academy. Perfect. Deborah Vaca, we appreciate you coming onto the show and to tell us more about what is going on in the adjunct academy. We appreciate uh, your time. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Have a great day. You too. All right, we're going to move across the country, Frank. I'm really excited about this one because you and I are both history buffs. And you actually threw out a date yesterday in uh, in talking about uh, today's guest for the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation. What was that date again? I believe it was 1609. 1609 when we're doing our promo. Might be a year off, but I think it was 09. But well, you know what? Let's ha let's uh, turn that uh, date over and see if we can fact check it with our very own Heather Hauer, who is from uh, the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation. Uh, Heather, good morning. Oh, well, let's Let's get you unmuted. <laughs> okay, Heather, maybe you try on your, there we go. Ready? <laughs> there we go. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So fact check real quick, 1609, is that a very significant year for this country? Um, well, 1609 is a significant, uh, a significant date. Um, 1607 is a significant date. Um, so in 1609, 1610 uh, marks the starving time. Is that the date that you're looking for? Or are you looking for 1607 when the first um, English settlers arrive at uh, Jamestown in Virginia? I think that's the date that we're talking about. Yeah, in 1607, um, the English settlers arrive um, at Jamestown in Virginia. And um, of course, when they get here, there are uh, folks already living in the area, the Powhatan Indians. Um, so those are just two of the cultures of people that we talk about at our uh, museum site at Jamestown Settlement. Now your title is the Assistant Director of Outreach Education and Digital Media Services. So um, first off, let's start off with what is the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation? Great. So the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation is actually an agency of the Commonwealth of Virginia. So we're a state agency. Uh, we operate two museums in the Williamsburg Hampton Roads area of Virginia, uh, the Jamestown Settlement and also the American Revolution Museum at Yorktown. Um, both of these are living history museums. So we have a combination of in gallery spaces where people can come and interact with um, artifacts and collections from the period, as well as living history programs that feature outdoor recreated spaces. Um, both of our museums are accredited by the American Alliance of Museums and we're open year round. That is fantastic. So I'm not sure if you're familiar, but every Thursday we do like to feature um, a museum across the country for our, our family fun series. Um, so because everyone is at home, uh, during this pandemic, what are some of the things that uh, the Jamestown Yorktown uh, museums are doing uh, for at home learners? 
Absolutely. We have um, unfortunately had to uh, close our museums from the middle of March until actually yesterday was our uh, grand reopening of our museum. So we're very excited about that. Um, but while we were closed, it was very important for us to continue to be able to engage um, audiences with 17th and 18th century colonial and American Revolution history. Um, so we tried to do that in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, we have a plethora of great resources on our website uh, that include interactives and activities and uh, lots of great content information. Um, we also have been doing lots of virtual programming, live broadcasts for lots of different audiences, um, students, uh, families, and uh, general adult audiences as well. So what are some of the more um, sought after topics, I guess, uh, would be my question to you, especially, you know, if you come to the museum in person, as well as just trying to, let's say, access it from your couch. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, we cover a lot of really great uh, content and um, because our, our history is so um, expansive and diverse, um, we like to cover just a variety of things. So at Jamestown Settlement, we talk a lot about the interactions of the um, cultures who came together in Virginia in the early 17th century. Um, so a lot of our programming relates to that cultural interaction. A lot of our uh, virtual broadcasts this um, last spring and into the summer and uh, will be into the fall as well, um, features um, conversations, demonstrations, um, period activities, and um, discussions with our costume staff about how these groups of people came together in Virginia and what their life was like, how they survived. Um, so in our virtual broadcast, we've done demonstrations of hunting from different cultural perspectives. Um, we've done, um, you know, meetings, uh, virtual meetings with our curators. So they are standing in the gallery in front of uh, artifacts from our collection and talking about how uh, important those items were to uh, the cultures and then we'd go outside with one of our costume staff and see them using that same object in context in the recreated areas. So um, we have a lot of great uh, history offerings um, over at the American Revolution Museum at Jamestown. We talk about both life on a farm and a homestead as well as life for soldiers and uh, folks in the military during the American Revolution. So lots and lots of engagements with our costume staff uh, there as well. Frank, I know you're a history buff just like I am. Do you have any questions for Heather? I do. So um, so with the with the founding of that settlement in Jamestown, uh, I know you mentioned artifacts. Were there like any journals by the Europeans or, or diaries by the Native Americans that, that kind of journaled the, the, the interactions between both, uh, both those parties? That is a really great question. Um, unfortunately, the Powhatan Indians um, did not have um, did, they did not write things down like the English did. So the unfortunate part of that is that we don't have much directly written or recorded by them. Um, most of what we know about the Powhatan Indians um, in the early 17th century was recorded by the English. Um, so we can use their writings, their uh, journals and uh, writings that they sent back to England um, to know about what life was like in Virginia and what um, life was like for the people they encountered there, the Powhatan Indians. Um, now that's not to say we can't use other ways to know about the Powhatan Indians. Um, a lot of archeology span uh, informs what we know about uh, the life of the Indians here in Virginia. Um, and um, we also use watercolors and um, drawings that were done by artists who came to North Carolina earlier than the 1607 settlement in Jamestown uh, to help us know uh, what Powhatan Indian life was like. So my niece wanted me to ask you one question. Pocahontas is one of her favorite movies of all time. Mm -hmm. So she wanted me to ask you how accurate was Pocahontas compared to the to the research you guys found between between the the, the, the Indians and the and the uh, uh, the Europeans, 
Well, the wonderful thing about the Pocahontas movie is that it inspires a great interest in Pocahontas and her life um, and that of the Jamestown uh, colony as well. Um, there are certainly um, some inaccuracies in the Pocahontas uh, movie, and we try to use that as a jumping off place at our uh, museum so that we can help um, students uh, and families understand who the real Pocahontas was. Um, as a matter of fact, in our museum at Jamestown Settlement, we have this really great new 16 foot long interactive table that focuses on the myth of Pocahontas um, and tries to get at what her life was was really like um, through dispelling some of these uh, perpetuated myths about about her life. One thing I do know about Pocahontas as opposed to the animated movie is that she did not uh, settle with John Smith. I believe she settled with John Rolfe. Is that correct? That is correct. She married John Rolfe um, and, and not John Smith. <laughs> One little fact I know about Pocahontas for sure. That was a great question, Frank. Yes, I, I was thinking the same thing too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all my, I can't take credit for that. That's, that was my niece. So I, <laughs> I mean, from from the mouth of babes, of course, they're they're just thirsting for the knowledge. And and what better resource than to ask, you know, an expert um, in that area? Um, Heather, before we uh, sign off, uh, we did have a question from one of our social media um, followers. Are there any plans that uh, the Jamestown is doing for the Fourth of July? Um, we do have an event at the American Revolution Museum at Yorktown. Um, so there's an event you can participate in if you are in town, since our museums are open again. Um, but if you're not in town, I would certainly encourage you to go to our uh, website, which is historyisfun.org, where you can find lots and lots of great resources and materials on the American Revolution and um, that relate to the 4th of July. Um, so absolutely if you're in town please come to the event history is fun.org and i i do have to say history is fun because you just don't know where we where we're going unless you know where we've been absolutely heather you know on behalf of frank and myself as two history buffs we really appreciate you coming on the show um especially i know the weather's not that great in virginia right now either <laughs> yeah we're getting some rain as well unfortunately <laughs> Yes. Well, Heather Hart, thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning on Up to the Minute. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Take Bye. care. <laughs> thank you again. What a fun topic to discuss, Frank. I, I'm so glad that we had Heather on the show, but we've got some very important announcements and events going on here at HCC. Yes, we do. So Coleman does it again, man. Second online medical system program. The second in the nation online medical system programs in the US. That's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, EDUmed.org's best in 2020 has ranked ACC Coleman College for health science the second nationwide for the best online medical system programs. Now, with this ranking, our students' career outlook could be even better. You know, this this is this is great pub for us with Houston being home to the Texas Medical Center. This strong ranking now increases the likelihood of those with the medical system credential being hired soon after clean their education. So shout out to Coleman, man, and keep on doing the outstanding work you guys are doing out there. Exactly. And I will say it, and cor someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that HCC Coleman College for the Health Sciences is the only community college here in the Texas Medical Center. So that's, that's something to be incredibly proud of already. But this uh, number two ranking in the nation is something to be equally proud of. So once again, HCC Coleman, we're so proud of you and glad to have you a part of the HCC family. Frank, uh, HCC scholarships are open to all of our current students who are domestic and international students. So um, if you're like me as a uh, first generation student who was trying to figure out how to pay for college, scholarships are a way to go. Definitely, definitely. If you're looking for tuition assistance, uh, HCC Foundation Scholarship for the 2020-21 academic year is still open, but the deadline is approaching. Um, applications for those close on August 31st of this year, 2020. So apply now at uh, hccsfoundation.org forward slash scholarships. That's right, Frank. Uh, Frank, I, we talked about this yesterday, you know, Rec Sports, Student Life, they've got a lot of things going on virtually uh, during this pandemic. And so one thing we talked about on Tuesday 
that's being done Tuesdays and Thursdays are boot camps and Zumba. Are you a Zumba guy? Uh, I'm a salsa merengue guy. Well, I, have not, I have not tried Zumba. I need to try Zumba though. Like, uh, so I'm definitely gonna check that out. But just so you guys know, Zumba and virtual boot camps are available on Tuesdays and Thursdays from noon to 1240. Uh, tomorrow, actually, uh, 625 this week, Zoom, Zoom class is taught by Dwayne Frazier. So it's free sign up, current HCC students, staff, faculty only, though. Must have an HCC email. So register today. Um, the the uh, point of contact is christian.andrews, C H R I S T I A N, dot Andrews at hccs.edu. Small correction, Frank, today is uh, Thursday, 625. Today, Thursday? <laughs> today is Thursday, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm sleeping, man. Don't, don't <laughs> I forgive you. It's okay. But another very important event that's going on this afternoon at one o'clock is hosted by Student Life, the intersection of Black Lives Matter and the LGBTQ, because this is also Pride Month. And in honor of Pride Month, we are having a very special guest, Brandon Mack, who will be discussing race, gender identity, and sexual orientation playing parts in the movement toward a more equitable world. And such an important topic, especially what's going on, you know, in in our country and around the world. Um, if you all are interested in participating in this event, again, it is today at 1 p.m., but you do need to register. It is required. Head over to hccs.edu slash student events. Uh, we also will have a post on our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages where you can also click and be sent directly to the registration form. I think what Brandon Mack is doing is, is absolutely stupendous. I mean, we have to have these conversations, no matter how uncomfortable it is for us to move forward as a people, as a society, we have to have these conversations in order to, to remedy, you know, the, the ills of the world that, we, that we're going through as far as social injustices, racial discrimination, things of that nature. So shout out to Brandon Magman for doing the work that he's doing. I agree with you, Frank. And uh, I, I definitely agree about the how uncomfortable it may be for people to have these discussions. But as we all know, education is key in being well informed and being able to uh, have those discussions with uh, one another. And it's okay to agree to disagree. But as I've said before, we just all need to be better human beings and we need to be kind to one another. We need to be respectful to one another. So I think this is a really great opportunity to have uh, to gain some knowledge about these topics. Um, but I hope everyone will find time to be able to participate in this event today. Again, once again, at 1 p.m., having a very important discussion. Frank, uh, we are also very, uh, very close to the beginning of our fall 2020 semester. And I've seen a lot of questions on social media, just as you've seen, about questions on financial aid, testing, admissions, and what have you. And so enrollment services are offering virtual info sessions all the way through August. Yeah, I mean, in this, in this pandemic world that we're living in right now, things are, are ever so changing on, on a dime. So virtual info sessions are weekly through August, offering help with the, uh, uh, admissions applications, testing, new student orientation, financial aid, choosing a program a major, of your choice and more. So register today at hccs.edu forward slash information sessions. That is correct, Frank. Um, they're very helpful. And if you do have any other questions in regards to uh, our application process, testing financial aid, be sure you can uh, send us DMs here on social media, but you can also utilize the virtual lobby that we have on our HCC website. So for more information, head, head over to our HCC website and you'll see the green bar at the top of our uh, banners that say, uh, go check out the virtual lobby. Um, Frank, we are about to wrap. So tomorrow is Friday. Does it even matter at this point? You know, I mean, all these days are running together. I thought it was Wednesday today. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to wake up and, and know what day it is, man. So. Yeah, TGIF. TGIF. That's I remember that programming back in the day. These oh, kids yeah, today man. don't have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Down in matters, hanging Mr. Cooper, step by step, man. It was boy like, meets world. Okay. Boy meets world. Yeah, boy meets boy world. Boy meets world. Yeah, well, tomorrow, man. tomorrow, Frank, we're going to be joined by uh, James Batiste, who is part of our logistics program, and he'll be here to talk about one of the five all important segments of the new jobsnowhouston.org initiative um, that we've been you know, sharing 
for the last few weeks now. Um, we're looking forward to hear what he has to say, what's going on with logistics. It's a strong field uh, before COVID, and we should be very interested to find out if it's providing some really good jobs. Yeah, I mean, for the, for those who are looking for work, man, I know, I mean, the unemployment rate skyrocket, 1.5 men, uh, Houston jobs were, were lost. So um, we got to, you know, if you have any questions and you, are you trying to find a new field of work, definitely check in tomorrow on tomorrow's show with Jenny T. So. Absolutely. And we're also going to be joined by one of our very own rec sports representatives, Shanisha Weir. Uh, she'll talk about the virtual programs that keep us active. And even if we can't go uh, out there on the field of our dreams, uh, Frank, <laughs> um, they're going to be uh, pitching their programs here on our events and announcements, as you've heard, but we're also just going to hear it straight from Shanisha. So be sure to join us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for Up to the Minute, and be sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't forget about YouTube, because we also have thousands of videos at your disposal. And once again, we appreciate you being here, and we'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Oh,